this movie, we're going to look at some of the pest and insect problems that face today's modern farmer. We're going to have a look at insects first, and then cover pests later in the movie. There are about 20 insect species that affect deciduous fruit in South Africa. We're going to look at the top six insects that affect deciduous fruit growing, those that can destroy an entire crop in less than a week. These insects are bollworm, codling moth, oriental fruit moth, false codling moth, Mediterranean fruit fly, and snout beetle. The first of the notorious six is the bollworm. The moth lays eggs on the leaves and the larvae that hatch burrow into the fruit and feed on the leaves, buds and growing points of the tree, causing a lot of damage. Codling moth, oriental fruit moth and false codling moth also lay their eggs on the fruit and on the leaves of the tree. When the worm hatches, it burrows its way into the fruit and destroys it. Farmers need to constantly keep a watch in order to know when the number of insects is increasing. This is known as monitoring. Snout beetles climb up the stem of the tree and eat the flesh of the fruit. To monitor snout beetle, the farmer will place a corrugated cardboard band around the stem of the tree. Snout beetles work at night and rest during the day, so the beetle will climb into the cardboard and have a snooze in the daytime. The farmer can open the trap and count the snout beetles within the cardboard corrugations. The rest of these insects can be monitored using a trap that has a sticky bottom. A female pheromone is put into the trap. As he smells the pheromone, the male heads in that direction. By counting the males in the trap, the farmer can work out when to spray for these insects. Snout beetle can destroy a crop overnight, while Mediterranean fruit fly, codling moth and oriental fruit moth can destroy a crop in a week. Bollworm will do a lot of damage in one week. They may be small, but these insects are quite lethal. So let's have a look at how to stop them in their tracks. There are two ways to kill these insects. The first is to use an insecticide cover spray. The insecticide is diluted in water and sprayed onto the entire area using a spray machine and tractor. When the insect comes into contact with the insecticide, it will die. The second method is known as baiting. A feeding attractant is mixed with the insecticide and sprayed in the orchard. As the insect feeds, it will eat the insecticide and die in a short space of time. Often female pheromones are placed in the orchard and will attract the male to the area. He'll rush around looking for the females that he can smell, never find them and die a frustrated death. This method is known as mating disruption. It is used very often for the flying insects. Now on to pests. There are two main types of pests in deciduous fruit orchards. They are soil nematodes and woolly apple aphids. Nematodes are very tiny worm-like creatures that live in the soil and plant tissue and feed on the roots of trees. They're especially fond of the tiny roots near the surface and can cause a lot of damage. The best way to find them is to take a root and soil sample to the lab as they're too tiny to see without magnification. At the time of soil preparation, nematodes are treated by fumigating the soil. This is done by attaching a tube to a ripper tine and placing a fumigation product into the soil. The soil is covered with plastic sheeting and the fumigant kills everything in the soil, including the nematodes. Unfortunately, it also kills the good bacteria, earthworms and other desired soil inhabitants. The woolly apple aphid is a little bigger than the nematode, but is still quite tiny. It lives under the ground and also above the ground and can be seen quite easily. Under the ground, it will attack the roots of the tree and leave tiny root knots where it has been. Above ground, the aphid will feed on the bark of the tree. 
They are easily noticed as a cotton-like covering on the leaf or branch. Woolly apple aphids are controlled in two ways. The soil can be treated with a systemic insecticide which will be taken up by the roots and pass into the stem and leaves of the tree. As the aphid sucks the juices of the tree, it takes up the insecticide and dies a short while later. Secondly, a natural predator, a wasp called Aphilinus mali, which eats the aphids, is often able to control them quite well. If they are not there naturally, the wasps can be brought into the orchard to do the job. There are a growing number of farmers who prefer to use natural methods. They're cleaner and greener and are cheaper than using a lot of poisons and of course, a lot of work is avoided. The red spider mite was one great success story using natural methods. A tiny mite called Californicus was introduced to South African orchards. It ravenously attacks the red spider mite and very soon controlled a pest that had to be sprayed four times a year with very toxic materials. Any spray material must be recommended to the farmer by a registered Avcasa advisor. The farmer is not allowed to choose the products and go out and spray them. I hope you've enjoyed the movie. Take a look at some of the others on our website.